Hi everyone. This next lesson that we are looking at is um, on a whole new way of graphing. It's a different system of graphing coordinates. These are called polar coordinates and it does relate to trigonometry. Okay. Um, really, it's going to actually look really familiar to you, even though it might look a little crazy right now. Um, but polar coordinates work off of a coordinate grid that is circular. Um, and we locate our points instead of having an X and a Y, we have an angle, which is theta, and a radius. So these coordinates are always going to look something like R comma theta instead of X comma Y. So I know this, this looks entirely different from what you're used to. You can still see your old coordinate plane in here. If you miss it terribly, you know, it's still there. This, here's your Y axis, here's your X axis. You can also see that this right here, this first ring, that is your unit circle that you know and love, okay? So we've got our unit circle, and you can see all of the angles that we're used to marking being marked in here, okay? All that's happening now is we're adding these additional rings on the outside. We're kind of taking those lines and extending them and then adding rings around our unit circle so that we can have a radius that's larger than one, okay? So these coordinates are always listed with the R value first, but I usually take the time to find theta. Um, so that first one, the theta is 5 pi over 6. So just thinking about my unit circle, thinking about where 5 pi over 6 is going to be, here's 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6 is the same as pi over 2, that's my 90 degrees, 4 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6. And then of course that makes sense because this horizontal line here would be 6 pi over 6 or 1 pi. So this right here is the line that represents 5 pi over 6. And then as far as finding a specific point on that line now, I'm going to use this radius of 3 to count out three rings from the center. So 1, 2, 3. So this point right here is that first coordinate from your examples. See how that works? All right, so let's try the next one. 2 and 7 pi over 3. So I'm first going to locate where 7 pi over 3 would be. So starting from here, pi over 3 is, remember, are your tall angles. It's the 60 degrees, right? So here's 1 pi over 3, 2 pi over 3. 3 pi over 3 would be like 180 degrees, or pi. Here's 4 pi over 3, 5 pi over 3, and 6 pi over 3 would be back here, which is 2 pi. And so then 7 pi over 3 brings me right back to where 1 pi over 3 would have been. It's this line here. And I'm counting out by a radius of 2. So 1, 2, and there would be point B. So now would be a great time to pause the video and see if you can do the next one, maybe two of these coordinates on your own. See if you can find where these points would be. So with this one, negative pi over 4, just like before with a negative angle measurement, it just means I'm going backwards by pi over 4. Pi over 4 are your middle dots, right, those middle points. And a radius of 1 just puts me on that first circle. It just puts me right here. So this would be point C. If I'm going to label them that way. All right, pi over 2 we know is like 90 degrees. So that would be this straight up and down line here. And a radius of 4 has me go 1, 2, 3, 4. So those were all pretty straightforward and hopefully at least a little bit intuitive for you. Um, this next one is going to be a little hard to wrap your head around. So let's start with 7 pi over 2, thinking about where that is. And so I would probably start by saying, okay, here's 1 pi over 2. 2 pi over 2 is just 1 pi. 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2, which again is the same as 2 pi. Keep going. 5, 6, 7 pi over 2 is going to be down here. So 7 pi over 2 is really the same thing as 3 pi over 2. Okay. So there's my angle, but notice this time my radius is negative. Think about how negatives typically work on the coordinate plane. If positive 4 is taking me down here, negative 4 is just going to take me back the other way. So I can go negative 4 by, by thinking of that red line, but then going backwards. 1, 2, 3, 4. It actually lands in the exact same place as point D. So that brings us to a really important difference between this type of graphing and like coordinate plane graphing. Um, the points are not unique. I can point to a spot on the, the polar grid 
And you might name it one way and somebody else might name it another. Because remember, we've talked about all the different ways we can name these angles. Like, for example, we said 7 pi over 3 is the same as 1 pi over 3. So this coordinate would take me to the exact same spot as like 2 comma 1 pi over 3. Okay? And then also the fact that I can do these by with a negative radius that takes me along the kind of the opposite line from the angle that's specified. Okay? So that will take a little bit to sort of wrap your head around. And then we've got all that stuff floating out there about, you know, when are the two angles the same and when do they have the same trig values and all of that. That's going to kind of come back to haunt us a little bit too. But if you can handle that, you're in good shape for right now. Can you handle finding points on the coordinate grid? Okay, we don't actually have to worry about example two. We're going to skip right over example two and head straight on to conversions. So converting between polar coordinates and rectangular coordinates. Okay, and usually when I'm teaching this in class, I do this whole thing where I like project the grid on the board and we find the point and then I get rid of the grid so that we just have the X and Y axis left and all that. I'm going to do my best to replicate that. But So let's say I give you the point and I'm going to do something with degrees just because um, I think it'll be more intuitive to you. So let's say I give you a radius of 3 and a theta of 60 degrees. And I want to know what the rectangular coordinates are. Rectangular coordinates would be like x and y. Okay, so let's think about what this tells us. This tells us, and I'm going to draw these grid lines in red so they're a little lighter than the rest. Okay, um, 60 degrees is going to be here-ish, right? That would be a 60 degree angle from my starting spot. And a radius of 3 takes me out to that third ring. So this is the point right here that I'm trying to find coordinates for. If we think of that on just a regular, and I'm just kind of zooming in on the first quadrant here, here's that point, right? I want to know the x, y coordinates of that point. Well, this would be your x coordinate, whatever this length is. And this would be your y coordinate, whatever this length is. The things we do know about this point is we know the length of this line because we went out three units here, right? So my hypotenuse is equal to three. And I also know that this angle here, whoops, I was about to write theta, but we know what theta is. We know that angle that we drew is 60 degrees. So now let's think about it. Using trigonometry, I could have handed this problem to you back when you were a freshman and asked you, how do you find x and how do you find y? If this is just a regular right triangle, we can use SOHCAHTOA. So I can say that the cosine of 60, I chose cosine, by the way, because the x is adjacent to 60, right? I can say cosine 60 is equal to x over 3, adjacent over hypotenuse. And then for the y, I can use the sine because this is opposite from the 60. So I can say sine of 60 equals x over 3. For each one of those to solve it, I would end up multiplying by 3 on each side. Okay, so that cancels, that cancels. Whoops, and I didn't mean to use an x here. I really should have used a y. Sorry if that was bothering you. Okay. And so I want you to notice what we came up with. We came up with that x is just equal to whatever the radius is times the cosine of the angle. y is equal to the radius times the sine of the angle. That should not be earth shattering to you because we've been talking for a long time about how x is always related to the cosine and y is always related to the sine. The only difference now is because we're working with multiple rings it's not just cosine and sine. We've got this radius value to throw in there. So here's what you need to know as far as conversions go. The x is always going to be r times cosine of theta. And the y is always going to be r times sine of theta. And if we were just working on the regular old unit circle, that r would be 1, and we would just have x equals cosine and y equals sine, which is exactly what we've been doing forever, right? So now all we're doing is throwing in this r value that lets us go 
um, you know, into multiple rings around that unit circle. Okay. Um, by the way, I didn't do this calculation. Let's do this real quick and make sure these numbers make sense. I'm going to make sure I'm set in degrees. I am. So 3 cosine 60 is 1.5. And 3 sine 60 is, I'm just going to say 2.6. So looking at this thing as though I'm, I'm ignoring the red lines for right now. I'm just looking at the x, y axis. Let's see if, a, if an x value of 1.5 and a y value of what we say 2.6 makes sense. And I think that it does because if you look at it along the x axis, this is 1, this is 2, and this is 3. So 1.5 would be kind of in between here, right? And along the y-axis, here's 1, here's 2, here's 3. So this here would be, eh, I'm, I may be a little high on that one, but um, 2.6 would make sense. It's somewhere between 2 and 3, okay? So that's really our goal here is can we find the coordinates of this point on our, our original coordinate plane not using the polar axis, okay? And this is the way you convert to that. So let's apply that to these first couple of examples. Now you'll notice these ones are in radians. Don't let that freak you out at all. Um, we're still going to do the exact same thing. So x is equal to r times cosine pi over 5. And if you need to, you can always fall back and draw yourself this picture if that's helpful. But I think you can associate x with cosine and y with sine enough that you could just jump straight to the math here y is 1.3 times sine of pi over 5. And then for each of these, I'm going to need to make sure that my calculator is in radians. So I'm going to do, what were my numbers here? 1.3 cosine pi over 5 and 1.3 sine pi over 5 and I get 1.05 and 0 0.76, and coordinates go together like this. So that'd be my xy coordinate. Um, let's verify that. Just make sure that makes sense to us visually here. So my original coordinate was pi over five, which is not one of your normal radians, but we know that this middle line is pi over 4 and that this line here is pi over 6. So pi over 5 is going to kind of go up the middle between those two. So that red line there is pi over 5. And then um, my radius was 1.3. So I'm going to go 1 and then a little bit further. So this is the point that I'm looking for. Okay. I found that the x-coordinate was 1.05, which makes sense because here on the x-axis, here's 1 and here's 2. So 1.05 I think makes sense for that. It's just a little bit past 1. Okay. On the y-axis, here's my 1, right? And so 0.75-ish makes sense for how high that red dot is off the y-axis. Okay. So I always try to just verify it visually, make sure it makes sense to me. You maybe can't always count it out exactly when you have crazy numbers like that, but you can at least get a visual and confirm that it makes sense. The same thing can happen when you're dealing with these crazy like negative r values. So I can just say x equals negative 2 cosine 5 pi over 4 and y equals negative 2 times sine of 5 pi over 4. Okay. In my calculator, negative 2 cosine 5 pi over 4 and negative 2 times sine of 5 pi over 4. Both of them come out to be 1.414. Um, that actually doesn't surprise me and I'll show you why in just a minute. Okay, so my actual coordinate would just be 1.414 comma 1.414. So if I go to verify this one, 5 pi over 4 would be, so here's 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, 
5 pi over 4. So here's 5 pi over 4. But I'm going backwards, right? So I'm going um, negative, negative 2. So I'm going, oh gosh, it's all scribbled all over. But here's my point right here. Two rings backwards, okay? So looking at my x-coordinate and my y-coordinate, 1.414, if this is 1 here and this is 2 here, I think 1.414 for that spot makes perfect sense. Same thing here. Here's 1, here's 2, so 1.4 makes sense right between 1 and 2. Anything along those pi over 4 lines, your x and y coordinates are going to be exactly the same because you're dealing with an isosceles triangle here. The 45, 45, 90 triangle is an isosceles triangle, and that's why I said I thought that answer made sense to me because I knew it was on a pi over 4 line. Okay, that one's pretty straightforward. The next one can get a little bit messy, um, and I will, I'll try to kind of preview that, but I, I think you're really going to see the mess when we do the second example. Okay, so don't get too bogged down by it. I, I promise I'll explain it as we go through example two. So now I'm going to give you just a regular rectangular coordinate, like maybe 4, 5, and I need you to give me back a polar coordinate to match that. So I'm going to jump straight to just looking at the first quadrant here. And I'm going to put the point 4, 5 here. And if I'm labeling that 4, 5, that means that this length down here is 4, because that's my x. And this length up the side is 5. If I need a polar coordinate, what I really need to know is about this diagonal, right? I need to know the length of that diagonal and I need to know what angle this is. Those are the two things that I need to find. Um, I'm going to use different methods for both. It's not quite as straightforward as up here. The x and y were really similar. These are going to be two totally different types of math. So think about back in like junior high, we were giving you problems where we gave you these two side lengths and said find the length of the hypotenuse. Do you remember how we did that? We did some Pythagorean theorem. 4 squared plus 5 squared equals r squared, okay? I'm going to go ahead and put these two things together. So that's 16 plus 25, so that's 41 equals r squared. And then let's take a square root. So square root of 41 is 6.4. I am going to mark it with a plus or minus. And you might be saying to yourself, why? Because it's a radius. That doesn't make sense. I mean, this is a positive radius. I promise that will make sense in a second. We're going to have to decide do we want to use a positive 6.4 or a negative 6.4, okay? So now let's think about the angle. Um, that's, not, that's a little more recent. If I gave you a triangle with this angle marked and I said find me the measure of that angle, I hope that you would say, well, this is the opposite and this is the adjacent. So I could set up tangent of theta is equal to 5 over 4. So then inverse tan of 5 over 4, because that's how we find theta, right, if we don't know what it is. I'm going to do second tangent 5 over 4. Oh, and you know what? I'm going to go back to degrees here, again, just because I want it to make sense to you visually. So. Um, I just did it in radians, but let me do it again in degrees. There's my degrees, 51.3 degrees. By the way, if I don't specify, I'll take either one. So if I don't tell you it has to be degrees or radians, you can give me either one. Just make sure to mark it if it's degrees, okay? If it's not marked with a degree symbol, I'm going to assume it's a radian value. So let's ask ourselves, because we know enough about the coordinate plane, right? And I only gave you the first quadrant here, but we know what the rest of this would look like. Does 6.4 and 51.3 make sense? So thinking about the, the, the unit circle, does a rotation of 51.3 degrees take you to where 4, 5 would be on the coordinate plane? Um, or is it in a totally different quadrant? I think that makes sense. And so then we can say, because that angle makes sense with where our point is, our radius can be a positive radius, right? We're heading in that direction. So our coordinate will be r, which is 6.4 and a radius of 51.3 degrees, okay? What's going to happen sometimes is you're going to have your point, and it doesn't typically happen when your point's up here in the first quadrant, but like I said, you're going to see this when we get to the second example here. You're going to have a point that's like down here, 
okay, or even over here, but you're going to get an angle that would take you like here, okay, and you're going to say, wait, wait a minute, what's going on with that? The problem is this whole thing with, remember when you take the inverse tangent, there's actually two different answers. So your calculator gives you one of the two. If you get an angle that doesn't seem to match up with where your point should be on the coordinate plane, that's when you need to t make use of this negative radius thing. So if your point was here, but your calculator gave you an angle that was down here, chances are these are like 180 degrees away from each other, as long as you did your math right. And then you could just say, well, fine, instead of taking a positive radius and heading this way, I'm going to use the negative version of the radius and it'll take me up here. So that's why with these ones, you really have to visualize them at the end and make sure that this lines up with where this coordinate should be. Okay. Let's go ahead down to example four. And I'm going to just stick with degrees here because it didn't tell me that I had to use radians. Okay. Um, oh, we should probably formalize this like we did the last one. So what you're going to see in your book is that r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. That really comes from how you would solve Pythagorean theorem. And I'm going to go ahead and put a plus or minus in front of here just to help you remember that. Okay, that that's how we find r. Theta can always be found by doing the inverse tangent of y over x. which is what we did right here in this step, okay? And it's always going to be y over x because your opposite side will always be your y value. So inverse tangent of y over x. Okay, so now let's, let's apply that to 6, negative 1. Those are, that's your x and your y. So to find r, um, I'm going to just set this up in regular old Pythagorean theorem. I never think to write it this way. I always just go to like 6 squared plus negative 1 squared equals r squared. This is 36 plus 1, so I get 37 equals r squared. And then let's take a square root of that 37, and I ended up with 6.08. And for now, I'm going to mark it with a plus or minus, just so I remember that the negative is a possibility, depending on what my angle comes out to be. Okay, so now for my angle, I know that tangent of theta will equal y over x, so negative 1 over 6, okay? And I know that's weird to think about, like, a side length being negative 1. That all just refers to its location on the coordinate plane. So I'm going to just stick with that. That's okay. I can have a tangent that's negative. So second tan of negative 1 divided by 6 gives me negative 9 degrees. I guess negative 9.5 degrees, okay? And that's okay, too. I can have a negative angle. I mean, if that really bothers you, you could do 360 minus 9.5 to convert it to a positive angle if you wanted to, but I'm fine with a negative in your answer, okay? So thinking about our coordinate plane, if I think about where 6, negative 1 is, 6, negative 1 is going to be like here, does a negative 9.5 degrees make sense for how to get down to that angle? So negative 9.5 degrees would take me down this way. And I think that makes sense. This is going to be a pretty tiny angle, right? Um, when I say does it make sense, if, if your angle would bring you somewhere over here, that's when I would say, nope, something's wrong with this. So I'm happy with negative 9.5. And because I like negative 9.5, I can use the positive radius, right? Because I can just move in that direction. So my coordinate here, my, no, sorry, this is a polar coordinate, so I should use the taller brackets, would be r, which is 6.08, comma, my theta of negative 9.5 degrees. And again, I'm okay with that answer in degrees or radians as long as you mark it. Okay, I'm definitely going to need more space for the negative 3, negative 4. Let me see what I can dig up here. All right, now we're working with negative 3 comma negative 4, and I'm trying to make polar coordinates out of it. So just like before, I'm going to set up Pythagorean theorem. By the way, if you're doing all of this in your calculator, I mean, I like to do a lot of this in my head um, because I tend to screw up less than typing in negatives in my calculator. But remember, if you are going to use your calculator for this stuff, those negatives will need to be in parentheses when you square them. 
This is 9 and this is 16, so that actually makes this really easy. This comes out to be 25 for r squared, which means my r value is just 5. And again, could be plus or minus 5 for my r value. Now let's think about my tangent. Tangent theta is going to be y over x, so negative 4 over negative 3. Well, let's do an inverse tan. Negative 4 divided by negative 3. And I get theta equals 53 degrees, 53.1 degrees. Okay, so let's think about this. Negative 3, negative 4 is going to be somewhere down here. Does that look like a 53 degree angle from our starting point? It does not. A 53 degree angle is going to be like up here someplace. Okay, so we'll say this is 53 degrees. So the problem we're running into is that in order to reach that point where it's supposed to be, I need to use the negative version of the radius because remember then that lets me travel backwards this way by five units and that'll take me to this point. So when I put my coordinate together, I can use the 53 degrees. I just have to make my radius negative so that it lands in the right spot. There's so many explanations for why this crazy thing happens. Let me talk you through a couple of them. Um, first of all, Remember that with tangent, tangents are the same in the first quadrant and the third quadrant. So when you did inverse tangent, you found the, the tangent, or you found an angle that was up here. We have to remember that this angle would also be a possibility. My other option, besides just making the radius negative, which I think is the easier way to go, would be to add 180 degrees to 53. So take that and plus 180, and that gets me my other possibility for an angle that has the same tangent. And so a 233 degree angle, that does make sense for that point down there. So I could have also chosen to write it as positive 5 with that 200 and what did I say? 233 degree angle. That answer would have been okay too. Either one of these would be correct. I usually think it's easier instead of trying to figure out what my other angle measure would be, I usually think it's easier just to make your radius negative. Okay. Also, if you think back to this step here, when you did negative 4 divided by negative 3, your two negatives are going to cancel out, right? So even though you're seeing it that way, your calculator is really treating this like positive 4 over positive 3, which would put you up here in the first quadrant, okay? So this is why with these ones in particular, it's really, really important that you um, visualize where your coordinate puts you versus where the actual coordinate is. And if it's in the wrong spot, my advice is usually just change the radius to the opposite sign, okay, to find where it's at. Um, I've kept you a really long time. I know there's one more question where it says write another polar coordinate with that would represent each of the above rectangular coordinates. I kind of just did that. So with this one, I just added 180 degrees. That only works because it's tangent, okay? But I could add 180 and get a different angle. Okay, of course I have to change my radius then if I do that. Um, I think the easier way to go would be to just take my angle and add 360 to it. And that way I can land right back in the exact same spot. So if I did negative 9.5 plus 360, so instead of calling that negative 9.5 this way, I could have called it 350 degrees this way. And then my other coordinate would have been 6.08 comma 350.5. The more complicated way to do that would be to add or subtract 180 and find this angle over here, and then I could have used a negative radius to still take me back in that other direction. But usually that adding or subtracting 360 is probably a simpler way to go. Okay, so you're going to try some of these tonight. I know this is a lot of new being thrown at you today, but I think you can handle this. Um, you're going to go ahead and try 13.4 tonight. We will certainly go over any questions next time I see you, and I hope you have a great day.